an overdose of black consciousness so that we can be able to stand up. People had started for the first time to say, no, no, we are no longer bleaching our skins and our hair. Black is fine. Black is beautiful. Outstanding figure, and then the guy intelligence here high. So about the first president SRC. that was unchangeable. Several political parties in South Africa have tried. The PEC has tried. The ANC has tried. They were disbanded. The apartheid regime and all its functionaries have believed that they had become impenetrable. Suddenly in the black community, there were different voices that were coming in. But what really, really brought everybody together was the Afrikaans as a medium of instruction being imposed on students until such time that they decided that they're not going to, to take classes which were taught in Afrikaans. When the teacher who came to teach mathematics or science in Afrikaans came, they would actually get out of class. Uh, and, and, and the Department of Education was not Inter or bunch education at the time was not interested. The, the attitude that they had was that if uh, black education is being paid for by uh, government, government can choose whatever medium of instruction they could. They were forcing us to study in Africans and it was difficult for us. Mathematics in Africans, that's Veskende. It was a Saturday before June 16. The first meeting took place there. The decision there, that's why TNC Machine made a suggestion, that uh, Maurice Isaacson had decided to demonstrate on June 16, okay. and then wait over the weekend to see what the situation was like. And the reason why we didn't want African system of instruction, we were oppressed by African's government, uh, even thugs. When they, when, you know, when, when they want to manhandle you, when they beat you, you know, it's Africans. Africans was, was, was sort of uh, a bully language. I remember my brothers were on the front lawn and they were painting posters and painting uh, placards and those sort of things. But, you know, it just didn't catch me. At the time, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what they, were, what they were doing and why they were doing it. You know, the minute you say to school kids that there's possibly no school tomorrow, the excitement is overnight, actually. It built up from last night in the morning. It's at its peak. It's excitement. It's, you know that you're not supposed to go to school, but you also have the anticipation of, of something that you don't know, but it, it smells like fun. It's going to be a fun day. <laughs> Assembly point at our school, morning prayers, and assembly was about to break, and that means going to classes. And TSD has told us that no, we will be there just after assembly, we'll be there. Now I'm worried because I'm about to start my first class. But then all of a sudden, we heard a nice singing. Power as they were coming, you could you could tell, you know, power, black power. And I was excited. So by about 8:39, most of the schools are already, you know, marching. We're all in the roads. Uh, you don't see too many cops. You know, it looks safe. It looks okay. We're just marching. We're going to meet Orlando West, eh? Orlando West, 
Then we pick the Orlando West and put. Then we go to Orlando Stadium. Orlando Stadium is where by now, President like a CC machine was going to give the speech and the program. Yeah, or what are we going to do next? Because we're holding the rear guard so the students should not just think that it's a holiday and they go away. We're just bringing order. So as we were approaching the school and the march was coming to a halt, and when we turned, we were the one now facing the police. So by the work of our speaker, we must disperse. Karen Twerna illegally, and we are not supposed to be doing that to our. So, but we didn't stop. We carry on three B now. Pamis had the plaque, and several bands had the plaque at the other one at our protest. And now, everything started. Then it was charged, it was tear gas. Um, now we're throwing stones and now pandemonium. It was the first time we saw a tear gas can, we didn't know even what it was. So when we saw it emitting smoke, we dispersed. There was definitely no education being disrupted, excepting that uh, the education which they themselves disrupted. Uh, I couldn't believe it. The same policemen who threw te the tear gas canister opened fire on the students. The police certainly didn't disrupt anybody's education. What happened? A troop of policemen Bablo Kilemo. So the Americans in between. Also not Cavalella, Orlando, not Cavalella, eh, Camo exciting like a guanola hotla tumbi. Never call it of Hanamo Mupifi. This wasn't a war. We were not terrorists. We had no guns. We never had a military training in our lives. We were school children coming from a classroom, demons marching carrying on with the demonstrating demonstration in order to hand over our grievances to the government. Tieti's words was, I come from Orlando West. Police have opened fire on the students, and I think they have taken this thing too far. From now on, whatever belongs to the system, I'm saying we must destroy. started banning the municipality offices. Anything which represented white government, we, we just got rid of it. Why him? Is it the Jesse Machinini, mine? I was not even sure that it was my child. You know, sometimes you find a, a Roslina Kopek somewhere. And another Roslina Kupeka, some way. You see that? I thought like that. As we interviewed Tietzi Mashanini, the news came in of how successful the student's plan had been. It makes me very happy. We blacks in South Africa do not have arms. And uh, the only thing we can hit at the system with is just to cripple the economy of the country. Now we are trying to be as peaceful as possible detain the parents at home and the parents are with us and they are prepared to stay at home as long as the students want them to stay at home. Now, with this, we believe uh, the authorities will feel the pinch and some way or the other, they'll have to succumb to our demands. Um, but yeah, you are, you, are, you are a kid, you belong to a group, you are, you are, you are serious. I'm Tieti's brother, I'm, I'm equally in charge in my little group there. I've got first-hand information, I'm proud of it, you know. 
By the time we start telling parents not to go to work, as a quella, we've mobilized that, that, that campaign. You're in charge. You, you go to the station, you see the parents that have woken up to go to work, and you start talking to them nicely, please go back home. Trains won't be moving. Anyway, if they move, we're going to ban them. It changed content from being just a student protest against Africans to being a liberation protest about the conditions of black people. And that was the time that when we first experienced police brutality as, as a family. Because the knocking started right after June 16, when they would raid the house. From corner to that other corner, the hippos are there. You look at the window, a gunman is standing there. All windows of the house. Outside the fence, gun people are standing there, ready to shoot. And Kanako Church is not there. I mean, my, my first reaction when I saw that happen, I thought maybe my brother is a criminal or he's done so, something something very wrong in terms of the law. Um, but a lot of people around the township, a lot of people in the neighborhood were sort of worshipping what he did. So many policemen in your home, in your home where all you used to is singing hymns and, and playing and joking and cooking and washing, suddenly there's, there's camouflage uniform, there's dogs all over the show, there's, the place is flooded with po police vehicles. And, and they've all come to this house, to this home. Um, you, you, damn, frankly, you shit your pants. They would take everything from the wardrobe, straw on the floor, from the kist on the floor. Even in cupboards, even under a couch, they would search under a couch for GG and rocks. And then when he walks into the house, we're all excited, we all rushing with words and questions and all that, and he couldn't stay for long, obviously. The little that he says to you, it's, it's all you need to know about what's happening. It's, it's the spirit, it's the action, it's the strength to go on and, and, and the inability to be afraid. And obviously, from that day, uh, we're stepping from one place to the other. We could not step in one place. And we're changing cars every day. Because every now and then we'd drive a car, the police would know about it. Because you, had, you have informers. Some of the elders, you used to say, but guys, stop fighting these white people because at least they give us half a loaf. And we said, we don't want half a loaf. And we don't want a full loaf. We want the whole baker. very excited. I had a, a boyfriend, so I had to go and make sure that at least I say goodbye to him. I might have spoken in parables to say, listen, you see me now, you see me no more, okay? I mean, that's exactly what we told our girlfriends when we left uh, Soweto. We said, we're going out. Military training, big guns, Samora Marshall, Frelimo, you know, Africa, my Africa, black president. Zeti Machinini left the country with uh, Selby Semela, who had been arrested and the South African government said, we're going to release you, but you must inform us on Zietzi Machinini. When he came to tell us that this is what they had done it, so Zietzi decided to keep him close to him because then he didn't want information going out, anything. So he was always with Zietzi for security reasons. Bani Mokhatli was also always with Zietzi because he, you know, he had, a, he had a car, so he could, you could transport them quite safely. So when they left the country, all three of them left. And after we jumped the, the, the border fence, we had to rest, we had to sleep for a couple of minutes. But we had to make sure that 
our headset to face the direction where we're going so that when we wake up, we don't go back, but we go forward. Of course, we had been reading about Botswana, the fact that Botswana is uh, free. Now, you don't have a feeling of what being free is. Even sang to that extent that it's yet to humble, was a way and a mabot, was a little little little. And to us, that was happening in a few months' time. So, Mashinini, when he was uh, recruited by the ANC, uh, he refused. By the PAC, he refused. And then uh, he believed in uh, his organization. CAC started actually traveling to the US, addressing um, the international community on what really happened in, in June 16. Everybody, every state leader in Africa, how we got it, they wanted to meet the state also. Who, who's the state? He was kind of uh, overwhelmed by this, all this attention, you know. Being a young man from South Africa, from Soweto, this kind of idolation, you know, or being idolized, you know, was, was kind of new. You know, it kind of, and uh, he had this puzzled look, you know, and uh, almost wanting to run away, you know. <laughs> Suddenly you don't have a home. We had to grow up pretty quickly. You had to basically depend on one another. Uh, you had no parents there. I was very conscious of the fact that all of us were young and we probably, some of the people got themselves involved into something that they did not understand. That's not the feeling that I had when I spoke to T.T. It was very clear that he knew um, the task that laid ahead of us. But my job is, he used to say, my job is to to, to fight for, for South Africa, not for myself. He says the people first, then and only then, me. CAT is able to walk into Guinea and, 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 and manage to, to, uh, to convince Sikutore to say we've got to look at these kids and see if we can assist them and walk into Nigeria and talk to General Os Osanjo and say that, you know, we, we are an alternative to the two organizations. And, and that creates a little bit of a schism also within the Black Consciousness Movement, who had, the older guys who had felt that, you know, we're the little BCM, they're the older guys, and they, if anybody, should be the people talking to other governments and things like that. So it created a little bit, no, not a little bit, a lot of schism, basically, which led to quite a lot of people's uh, perceptions of Tietz as being an arrogant guy. But uh, as I said earlier, arrogance and initiative <laughs> in my books are uh, two completely different things. He became a persona non grata in Botswana. I think the Botswana government, because of the limelight he was getting each time he had come to Botswana, the newspapers would come, give me an interview, and talk about activities and so on. I think the Botswana government was not happy. So Titi went to Nigeria to represent us in Africa, and I remained in Europe as a representative of uh, our movement at the time in, in the whole Europe, land, England and Europe as a whole. The Nigerians also were telling us that in order for us to, uh, to, to recognize you, you must not only represent Soweto, you must, you must be nationwide. Hence, we had to do uh, with the name of Soweto Student Representative Council, come to with the name of South African Youth Revolutionary Council. Uh, 
I'll teach you machine in you. Must figure naturally the time is born. Was will come uh, and uh, was uh, encouraging ways that you know, this Nigeria is a different environment altogether. See, they strong. There was a festival. First Act 77, in 1977 in Nigeria, Miriam Makiba was one of the main performing acts. I had come in with the Liberian contingency. When Miriam saw some of the dances I had done, she turned and said, why don't 